Again the translucent brownish world, brownish world emanated light. Seats came out of the ground like huge toadstools. They were ranged in rows around a circle, with the centre being empty. There were striations of different crystals along the walls. Kira kept her mind closed, but still she could feel little tentacles trying to infiltrate her mind. It must be any of these beings, she thought, and who are these strange creatures, she wondered. Her curiosity was greater than her fear. Everyone moved aside for Slotromi to walk through. Slotromi motioned her to take a seat on a bench in front. Zork sat next to her. He moved to stand in the centre of the auditorium. All the other beings, animals and creatures, took seats around the centre. Slotromi, with such presence and command, raised his arms. As in an act of blessing, he was covered in a blue light. The floor suddenly started to light up. It was activated. Bright light seemed to shine from underneath. Slotromi waited and then moved to some seats by a wall, which looked like an altar. He faced the altar and said, we are gathered now here to help our sister planet Earth and its inhabitants. It was his prayer. I ask for the support and goodwill of the crystals. Suddenly it became dark. The light emanating from the crystal vanished. There was a hushed silence. Only the breathing of the beings could be heard. Slatromi stood silently as if in prayer. Kira sat still next to Zork, wondering what was happening. The crystals? Were they beings themselves? she asked herself. Now she wondered who did control the light because when Sotromi asked for the support and goodwill of the crystals, the light disappeared. Suddenly the lights returned behind the crystals. Sotromi stood and bowed to the wall. Thank you. He turned facing everyone. The crystals have a very ambivalent relationship with humans. The humans they feel are destroying them and their planet. Part of them would rather the humans leave for good but the other side sees how the humans are as intertwined as the crystals are with Earth. It is a dichotomy, as some of you know. Prior to the humans, the crystals were dormant. The heightened consciousness of the humans activated the consciousness of all other life forms on Earth. The crystals entered the realms of consciousness. They have to understand their journeys are synchronous. Now, is there anyone else who is opposed to helping the humans? There were rumbles coming from the seats, but no one put themselves forward. Good, let's move on. Slotromi sat down, silence everywhere. Then a human with long white hair stood up and moved to the front. His face was round and soft, but a face full of pain, as well as full of knowledge and wisdom. He was obviously old, but how old Kira wasn't sure, probably in his late sixties, seventies. He also wore a long woven cloak woven in blues, purples and greens. It looked very warm. It was similar to the cloak she was given, but in different colours. Her cloak was in various shades of amber, a beautiful golden, red and brown woven cloak. Now she realised everyone was wearing some kind of cloak, except for the man sitting by himself in the back on one of the seats. He was human, definitely. Brown curly hair, very still. Curiously, he came in and out of focus. He was wearing ordinary clothes, jeans and a black jumper. Kira wondered who he was and why no one put them together. He never looked anywhere but right in front of him, at the person speaking in the centre. Greetings, the man in the centre said. Most of you know who I am. I am Lorden. I am human, originally from Great Britain. The time is nigh. We have to act now and we know of a way of resolving the situation. As you know, the wars taking place between the human beings have been going on for some time. The wars are in the Middle East, Africa, parts of Asia, Pakistan and Afghanistan. These wars will carry on indefinitely. There is no resolution. The fight over energy resources, religion and cultural separatism is a conflict the humans seem unable to resolve. Each feels vindicated in their actions. The result will be cultural determinism and cultural annihilation. The climate is changing. You can even see here in Greenland how the snow melts over larger areas. It is becoming warmer. The atmosphere is starting to change. We cannot change the course of the environment quickly, but we can help the area in the Middle East. With change in the environment, that area will only become hotter and drought will be more severe. However, what you see in the Middle East is not the whole picture. 
there is another energy there, not the one of conflict, discord and pain, the energy we have experienced in this millennium. Pre-biblical, hidden beneath the constructions of human civilization, there is a nurturing, a harmonious and life-enhancing energy. An energy, if released, could neutralize and atone the area. Different type of vegetation would start growing, and this vegetation would stop further barrenness. The plant life and the climate have a symbiotic relationship. The new vegetation would attract more rain. The Middle East can be changed. There were murmurs in the audience. A woman creature stood up and said, Yes, Lord, and a wonderful idea, but where is this energy going to come from? Kira looked around at all the different beings, and then she noticed the man dressed in jeans, again sitting quietly in the back. And when she looked again, he was no longer there. She couldn't understand it. She didn't see anyone else. She, she didn't see anyone leave. She would have noticed someone getting up and leaving. She tried to see behind where he was sitting to see if there was a hidden passageway. Impossible. There was no wall behind, just empty space. Kira was drawn back to the immediate discussion, for now there was an active debate. Slatromi, you have a simplistic view of the situation, said a very statuesque woman with black hair drawn up and an owl perched on her shoulder. The owl hooted as well and stared at Slatromi. Suddenly the owl turned its head 180 degrees and stared at Kira. Monarch, I value your opinion, but why do you say that? asked Slatromi. Monarch looked at Slatromi and said, are you saying an energy which is hidden beneath the surface is capable of changing all the conflict in the Middle East and that this energy has never been tapped into? There are many spiritual and enlightened people who live there as well. Are you assuming they have not felt it? However, even if this energy exists, how can it alone be responsible for change? Change surely is a product of multifaceted events. Can one event cause such change? Slatromi smiled. Monarch, do you think a tsunami can change events or a major earthquake? So what about an eruption of positive energy? Where is this energy? Where does it come from? All I will tell you at this time is that the energy source is Egypt. Egypt has had a crucial role in the Middle East and North Africa. Another creature stood up and asked, how can this energy be released? It will be released from a natural disaster, but will be induced by a human event. And do you know the humans who will be creating this event? We are in the process of recruiting the humans now. The audience hummed. Kira wondered which humans and wondered if her coming here had anything to do with this project. Would she be recruited? She leaned over to Zork and asked him, Do you think I will have anything to do with that? Zork looked intently at her. It was hard to tell what he was thinking or feeling. A controlled power, she thought. It could turn any moment. But it didn't feel like that. You may do, but Slatomi keeps his plans very much to himself. He reveals information only at the time it is necessary. However, I am sure we will find out soon enough. But Zork, forgive me, but why me? Let's wait for Slatomi to explain. Zork turned towards Slatomi with a gesture to Kira implying that was the end of their conversation. Someone else was asking what time scale were they were talking about. Imminently, replied Slatromi. Then Monarch stood up again and asked, Are the crystals involved in this? The crystals, replied Slatromi, are critical in spreading this released energy through the ground. I am afraid at this time this is all I can say. I will call you in the same way for the next meeting. Kira noticed the curly brown hairs sitting again, and then she was sure he just vanished. Kira wanted to know what was, that was about. Then suddenly, suddenly, Slatromi was standing in front of her. Kira stared at Slatromi, whose eyes seemed to change from black to yellow. She blinked and his eyes were dark again. A fear rose inside her. She realized she was at the mercy of all these creatures, and in particular at Slatromi's, Dork and Slatromi, her two companions, or guards, alien, powerful creatures. <laughs>